Would a leader not feel pressured to comply with the demands of Western powers in the face of threats? These powers have gone as far as attempting assassinations and coups against such leaders. Figures like Thomas Sankara met their end due to the paths they chose, and Traoré seems to be trading a similar path. So, does fear not grip him? Recently, Traoré boldly stated that he does not fear death. This assertion rattled external powers, who anticipated a retreat on his part. Should the West be apprehensive this time? And to whom is this fearlessness being proclaimed? Picture a leader who fearlessly declares, I am not afraid to die, directly challenging imperial powers built on fear and submission. In a world where Western dominance has dictated global politics for centuries, Ibrahim Traoré, the youthful president of Burkina Faso, is causing a stir with his bold leadership style. In a resolute address, he proclaimed his fearlessness in the face of mortality, taking on both the West's long-standing tactics of intimidation and the internal foes of African progress, cowardice, treachery, and ineptitude. Traoré's words signify more than mere defiance. They stand as a manifesto for a new Africa, an Africa that rejects Boeing to the vestiges of colonial influence and instead aspires to true independence. Traoré's message is a rallying cry, a clear call for a fresh brand of African leadership. To grasp the significance of his words, let us first delve into his bold proclamation. Why would a youthful African leader openly state that he harbors no fear of death? What message does Traoré aim to convey to both his supporters and his opponents? Traoré's assertion of his fearlessness in the face of death transcends mere personal bravado. It stands as a deliberate challenge to Western imperialism and a plea for unity among Africans. Throughout history, the West has wielded fear as a key instrument of dominance, employing tactics such as assassinations, coups, and economic penalties to assert control over African nations. Visionaries like Patrice Lumumba, Thomas Sankara, and Muammar Gaddafi, who envisioned an Africa liberated from Western exploitation, were swiftly met with severe reprisals. By proclaiming his lack of fear, Traoré not only rejects this history of intimidation, but also neutralizes one of the West's most potent tools of influence. This declaration represents a profound psychological gesture. Traoré signals that he remains undaunted by the fear of death, a fear that has long been exploited to uphold the existing power structures. His words resonate deeply across the continent, serving as a stark reminder that African leaders must be prepared to make ultimate sacrifices to attain genuine independence. Moreover, this statement acts as a rallying cry for the African populace. Traoré speaks not just for himself, but for all Africans who have endured subjugation, oppression, and silencing at the hands of colonial and neo-colonial forces. He advocates for a transition from a mentality of fear and subservience to one of bravery and resistance. Essentially, Traoré asserts that Africa should no longer be controlled by the shadow of fear, but by a spirit of defiance. Moreover, Traoré's position serves as a rebuke to those hindering progress from within Africa, individuals complicit in their country's exploitation, often for personal gain. By affirming his lack of fear of death, Traoré also confronts those who have compromised their principles to retain privileged positions through external influences. He challenges these figures directly, asserting the presence of a novel form of leadership, one that is impervious to manipulation or coercion. Through his fearless statement, Traoré paves the way for a fresh era of leadership, characterized by boldness, steadfastness, and a proudly African identity. However, his vision extends beyond this point. He has outlined a blueprint for the continent's rejuvenation, emphasizing the necessity of eradicating three specific shortcomings, cowardice, betrayal, and incompetence. Why does Trahori emphasize these three vices as obstacles that Africa must overcome to achieve genuine liberation? Before delving deeply into this subject, we kindly ask for your support by liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel for more captivating content. Thank you. Trahore's plea to eliminate cowardice, betrayal, and incompetence stands as a potent criticism of the very qualities that have impeded Africa's advancement and perpetuated its ties to its colonial history.
Each of these vices has played a distinctive role in upholding the current state of affairs, and comprehending their repercussions is vital to understanding Traoré's vision for an emancipated Africa. Cordis transcends personal inadequacy. It is a systemic challenge that has enabled external influences to maintain their hold on the continent. Cordis embodies the reluctance to oppose oppressive regimes, the fear of relinquishing authority or advantages, and the inclination towards safety rather than sovereignty. Throughout the ages, the West has weaponized Cordis to cultivate a compliant African leadership cadre, leaders who opt to yield to foreign pressures rather than risk confrontation. Trahore's emphasis on eliminating Cordis signifies a direct appeal for a new generation of leaders, leaders unafraid to tackle both internal misconduct and external exploitation. Conversely, betrayal is a deeply rooted issue that has afflicted Africa since the era of the slave trade. It entails the act of betraying one's compatriots for personal profit, often at the instigation of foreign entities. Betrayal serves as the instrument employed to subvert movements, advocating for independence and self-determination. Whether it involves the disloyalty of revolutionary leaders by their most trusted aides or the breach of public trust by those in positions of power, this vice has consistently sabotaged Africa's pursuit of unity and empowerment. Traoré's plea to eradicate betrayal champions honesty and unity, encouraging Africans to prioritize collective advancement over personal gain. Incompetence stands out as the most widespread among the three vices. It does not solely pertain to a lack of skills or knowledge, but is a purposeful tactic employed by the West to perpetuate Africa's reliance. Incompetence has been fostered through foreign aid initiatives that foster dependence rather than self-sustainability, educational systems that neglect local wisdom, and governance frameworks that reward compliance over proficiency. Trahore's stress on eliminating incompetence signals a call for a fresh epoch of African leadership, one that is well-informed, competent, and devoted to the populace rather than external sponsors. By advocating for the expulsion of cowardice, betrayal, and incompetence, Trahore not only pinpoints the issues, but also delineates a vision for a novel Africa, an Africa that is self-sufficient, cohesive, and resilient. Yet, how has the Western world responded to this audacious new vision? The Western reaction to Trahore's bold declarations has been swift and revealing. Western media sources have promptly branded him as a radical, a provocateur, and even a potential dictator. This response is unsurprising from a system that has long relied on a narrative of African inadequacy and reliance to rationalize its ongoing intervention on the continent. Why does the West harbor such apprehension towards Traoré's words? He poses a direct challenge to the intricately woven system of neocolonialism that has perpetuated Africa's enduring reliance. Over the years, Western nations have utilized economic coercion, political manipulation, and military interference to uphold their dominance over African states. Trahore's plea for a departure from this structure amounts to a declaration of war against this neo-colonial hierarchy. His steadfastness in the face of Western intimidations symbolizes a move towards a more resolute Africa, one that demands equality and respect, not benevolence or condescension. The unease of the West towards Trahore transcends his individual leadership. It pertains to the ideals he embodies. The notion of a united, self-governing Africa that no longer adheres to the norms set in Washington, London, or Paris challenges the economic and political stakes that Western nations have meticulously nurtured. If more African leaders adopt Trahore's stance, the entire framework of Western influence on the continent could begin to crumble. Moreover, Traoré's leadership lays bare the hypocrisy of Western governments that espouse democracy and human rights while supporting autocrats and corrupt administrations that serve their interests. His actions unveil the dual standards that have characterized Western policies towards Africa, where stability outweighs democracy and resource accessibility supersedes human rights. Traoré's audacity has not only disconcerted Western powers, but has also sparked a fresh surge of pan-Africanism throughout the continent. His leadership is prompting a reassessment of what African governance can and should entail. What does Trahore's leadership signify for Africa's future? 
His leadership embodies a radical departure in African politics, one that has the potential to redefine the continent's course. His methodology is grounded in a straightforward yet potent premise. Africa's liberation must encompass political, economic, cultural, and psychological dimensions. It is this all-encompassing outlook on freedom that renders his leadership so revolutionary. Traoré comprehends that genuine autonomy necessitates more than the mere absence of foreign forces. It demands a comprehensive dismantling of the colonial mindset deeply embedded in Africa for centuries. Moreover, Traoré's leadership poses a challenge to his fellow African leaders, prompting a pivotal query. Will they persist in conforming to the rules dictated by external influences, or will they align with Traoré in forging a novel trajectory towards authentic sovereignty? His plea to break free from cowardice, betrayal, and incompetence serves not solely as criticism, but as an entreaty, a summons for a fresh breed of African leadership characterized by courage, proficiency, and unwavering dedication to the populace. Furthermore, this leadership vision revolves around fostering a distinctive form of African solidarity. Traoré's stress on competence and honesty could potentially pave the way for a new phase of African collaboration. By concentrating on fortifying independent institutions and nurturing regional partnerships, Traoré is laying the groundwork for a more cohesive and self-sufficient Africa. This vision is not merely a lofty aspiration, it is an achievable goal. With effective leadership, Africa stands poised to emerge as a global force, a continent abundant not only in resources but also in human capital and innovation. Nevertheless, the road to realizing this vision is laden with obstacles. Africa contends with a multitude of internal and external challenges, ranging from ingrained corruption and political turmoil to economic dependency and external interventions. However, Traoré's leadership presents a blueprint for surmounting these hurdles by emphasizing education, directing investments into local economies, and nurturing a climate of answerability and openness. Africa can construct a future liberated from the specter of its colonial history. Amid Traoré's journey through these trials, it is imperative to ponder the broader geopolitical repercussions of his leadership. The global stage proves to be a daunting arena for any leader advocating radical transformations, particularly one advocating for the type of sovereignty Traoré envisions. Western powers, deeply entrenched in African affairs, are unlikely to cede their control without resistance. They possess an array of tactics, from economic sanctions to clandestine maneuvers, to undermine any regime challenging their supremacy. Nonetheless, Traoré's vision garners support from allies. A fresh wave of solidarity is emerging as countries in Latin America, Asia, and the Middle East, which have also grappled with colonial legacies and Western interventions, are forging alliances grounded in mutual esteem and shared objectives. Traoré's position could spur heightened South-South collaboration, constructing a unified front against Western dominance. Furthermore, Africa itself wields considerable influence. The continent abounds in resources, boasts a youthful population, and brims with potential. Traoré envisions a unified Africa that harnesses these strengths, a vision that is not only viable but also strategically astute. If African nations can unite, combining their resources and talents, they can forge a formidable alliance capable of withstanding external pressures. The crux of this success lies in unity and self-reliance, principles fervently advocated by Traoré. However, formidable challenges loom large. The West wields not only economic leverage, but also cultural and psychological influence. Overcoming these hurdles demands more than mere political determination. It necessitates a cultural metamorphosis and a fundamental reassessment of Africa's global standing. Traoré's leadership offers a preview of this prospective new Africa, confident, self-sustaining, and unflinching in asserting its sovereignty on the world stage. Moreover, Traoré's vision must navigate the intricacies of intra-African politics. While many African leaders share his aspiration for a more autonomous continent, harmonizing these varied interests into a cohesive strategy is no mean feat. The African Union, regional bodies, and individual nations must unite in a coordinated endeavor to counter external pressures and bolster internal capabilities.
This endeavor demands not only political solidarity, but also economic cooperation, cultural interchange, and mutual reinforcement. The obstacles may seem daunting, yet Traoré's leadership is already instigating transformation. Throughout Africa, there is a burgeoning acknowledgement that traditional approaches are no longer adequate. The continent necessitates daring, inventive solutions that prioritize African interests over external influences. Traoré's position serves as a compelling summons to all African leaders to stand beside him in the pursuit of authentic independence. As Traoré steadfastly navigates this audacious path, the query extends beyond the mere survival of his vision to its potential flourishing. Ibrahim Traoré's leadership signifies a pivotal juncture for Africa. His resolute stand against Western hegemony, his plea to eradicate cowardice, betrayal, and ineptitude, and his vision for a cohesive, autonomous Africa signify a profound departure from the past. Traoré is not solely challenging the West. He is challenging Africa itself to rise to its zenith, shed the vestiges of colonialism, and forge a new trajectory grounded in self-sufficiency, proficiency, and solidarity. Traoré's leadership transcends being just a ray of hope. It beckons all of Africa to action. Should the continent rally around leaders like Traoré, unafraid to confront the status quo and advocate for tangible transformation, the long-standing struggle for genuine independence in Africa may finally be within grasp. The path forward is strewn with obstacles, yet with bravery, solidarity, and resolve, Africa can and will prevail. The lion has awoken, and its roar will not be hushed. Africa's moment is upon us. As we peer into the horizon, it is evident that Traoré's influence will extend far beyond Burkina Faso. His vision carries the potential to spark a continent-wide movement, one that redefines Africa's role in the global arena. It envisions an Africa emancipated from colonial remnants, emerging as a frontrunner on the world stage. A continent that shapes its own fate and motivates others to follow suit. This is the Africa that Traoré envisages, and it is an Africa well within her grasp. By embracing Traoré's plea for a novel brand of leadership, Africa can at last cast off the shackles of its colonial history and carve a fresh path towards genuine autonomy and prosperity. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and don't forget to support the channel by liking, sharing, subscribing, and turning on the notifications bell so you don't miss upcoming uploads. Peace.